Hi, my name is Dennis Ari. I'm a member of Managed OpenShift Black Belt team here at Red Hat. So today we're going to talk about how to deploy Azure Red Hat OpenShift or Arrow cluster using Ansible. Now, before we move forward, some of you might have wondered why we are deploying Arrow cluster using Ansible while we can actually do so through either Azure CLI or Azure Portal if you prefer using console and GUI. Now, one of the reasons might be that you might want to be compliant with your organization's governance in provisioning cluster. So you can avoid, for example, of, um, creating a rogue cl cluster. So here, we're going to talk about um, an example of how to deploy uh, your Arrow cluster using Ansible. But again, this is just a high level overview um, and just an example. So feel free to modify and edit after uh, as you deem fit. Uh, now, before we go to the deployment, I would like to mention some prerequisites of um, de uh, deploying Arrow via Ansible. So here, So you would need Azure Active um, subscription. And then optionally, you may also need a Red Hat account for if you um, want to do a pull secret. And then here for our example, we will use um, our native Arrow module. So here we'll also require um, Azure.az collection module, which you can get from our um, collection. And then you will also want to have Ansible installed. Again, these are just some of the prerequisites, the implementations or deployment or per, per, the prerequisites themselves may vary, depend on your uh, deployment. Now, the other thing that we will need now is the deployment itself. But before I'm t uh, we talk about um, how to deploy it, a little bit about Ansible. So Ansible is a configuration management tool that can also help you with cluster provisioning. It has um, it has few benefits that um, makes it much more interesting than the other tools out there in terms of provisioning a cluster, such as it is agentless, so you don't need to install um, on each of your target node, for example. And also, m most of the modules are actually idempotent, meaning that no matter how many times you run it after the first time, it will not change. So. The other thing that also um, interesting about Ansible is that it's written in YAML files and many, uh, many um, that many people are already familiar with. So that's what makes it also enticing for you to try. So here we will just start with the deployment. Then. There are actually some components in um, Ansible itself. There's something that we would call playbooks and playbooks itself contain self plays and tasks. So those are the items or the actions that Ansible would do on your behalf. So here in your playbook uh, files that you would create, And again, this is a YAML file. Here you would then define um, items like your resource group. Here we would abbreviate it as RG and your Finet or your virtual uh, network and then your subnet again, um, one for each, your uh, control plane and also your uh, worker nodes. Um, and then you also need to define here your uh, OpenShift cluster specifications. Here I will just call it cluster spec. And in addition to this, um, you would also cre um, create a inventory file. And here 
it is actually uh, an INFR. Here, then, you would define your um, host or control node, and you also define your target node or your manage node. And then, last but not least, and most importantly, is that you would need to provide permissions or grant access to Ansible to be able to use Azure uh, resources. So for example, um, the service principles, etc. So that is pretty much it and how to deploy it. And after you create all these files, then you can simply deploy uh, your um, cluster using the command of uh, Ansible-Playbook. And that's it for today. So thank you again for listening and watching. And then uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to visit our site at www.redhat.com. Thank you again.